Good morning, everybody. This is Sarah B. Hansen, and um, I'm doing an online video today on how to do a variegated wash. And we can um, paint together a, um, a cute little abstracted rectangle here, something like this, to, um, I don't know, just play and have fun and ease the boredom. You can make anything out of this, too, if you wanted, like, this almost looks like the landscape to me, the little trees and a, and a weird red sun, the harvest moon or something, I don't know, a vase, I don't know. But, you know, it's just fun to play with beautiful colors on paper and to create something fun. So that's what we're going to do today, and I can show you step-by-step step how to do that. Um, so what I have done here is done, drawn a little rectangle on a piece of 300 pound, um, hot press paper, but you can use 140 pound cold press. That's fine. If you want to, um, I just wouldn't go any less than that. I wouldn't use a hundred, I wouldn't use 90 pound or, or some kind of wimpy watercolor paper because it just doesn't hold up well and your colors will look all washed out. And, um, but I like this paper because I don't have to tape it down. Um, cause it doesn't bend when I put water on it and, um, the washes always turn out really beautifully on this. So that's what I'm using is, is a 300 pound hot press. And, um, I'm using, uh, some Daniel Smith colors here. I've got my old palette. You can see uh, up here in the corner. I'm, I've got a cobalt teal blue from Daniel Smith, all squeezed out on there. Fresh squeeze of paint. Um, I've got Holbane, um, vermilion hue right up here in this area. I've got um, Aussie red gold right here in this spot. No, in this spot here. And then that color there is Quinacridone burnt orange, which I may use today. I'm not sure if I'll use it or not, but I have it squeezed out just in case. So just a few colors, but you can play with any colors you have. If you don't have to paint, um, then just use your cake paint that's already in the cake pans. Um, sprinkle them, spray them with a little bit of water to wet them so they're nice and hydrated before you begin. Um, I'm also using a wash brush. This is a um, sable bristle here. It's one and a half. I don't even know what company made this thing. It's so old. Um, and um, But you can use like a, a round brush like uh, this is I think a uh, like a 10 or a 12 number round. I, I use them so much I wear off the the manufacturer and all that stuff. But anyway, a sable brush is the best for this because they hold water really well. So what I want to do first is I'm going to go ahead and take my, my flat sable brush and dip it into some um, clear water. So in other words, water that is clean and clear with no color on it. I'm going to fill this whole rectangle with my water. I'm going to coat all the surfaces of the inside of the rectangle because what happens is the watercolor will move by itself to all the areas that are wet, okay? It's not going to cross over um, a border of dry unless you push it there or splatter. Um, and so wherever it's wet, it can move on its own and that's the beauty of watercolors. We all love, right? Well, it's, maybe it's a love-hate relationship, I don't know. But anyway, you're gonna go ahead and wet that down. What you wanna do is you wanna make sure that all the surfaces are wet. So you kinda of wanna hold it up to the light a little bit, turn it this way and that. So is it all wet in that rectangle? And then also checking if you got a little river or a puddle, you get rid of those. So I'm going to um, touch a piece of paper towel at the corner of this, tip it so that it drains all down into there so that I don't have any lakes, ponds, rivers going on in this. It's just damp paper, okay? So now what I'm gonna do is go ahead and take my brush and I'm going to lay in some of that beautiful Aussie red gold into this square, okay? Now what I wanna do is, is get my brush wet, drag it across the surface of my water container and then, oops, that's Konakadon gold. Yeah. Um, Got to throw out some more of this Aussie red gold, I see. Okay. So what I want to do is have a big enough area to stir this paint around. And because what will happen is it'll get little granules and it won't go on super easily unless it has some water in there. I'm stirring it around in here and I'm making sure it gets homogenized. And I'm also just adding water to the paint so that it runs a little bit more. So it's almost like milk, okay? So laying in that color in whatever pattern you want, very softly, very smoothly, you're not pushing it, it's wet. So you can see where it's moving out, it's getting these beautiful soft edges. 
before anything dries, you wanna go ahead and, and try to move fairly quickly. I'm rinsing off my brush, I'm grabbing some um, vermilion, stirring it a little bit to get that homogenized look. I'm gonna lay that in nice and, and intense in some of these areas. Now look, I'm kissing that yellow area, but I'm not necessarily painting into it or over it. And notice how fast I'm moving too. I'm not um, stirring on my paper. And so in other words, I'm not making a bunch of this weird stirring mud situation. So here's some cobalt teal. Go ahead and lay that in there. This is cobalt teal blue. And I can bring it up into here if I want to or not. Um, but again, I'm kissing the other colors. I'm letting them touch, but I'm not pushing them there. So now what I can do is pick this up, tilt my paper. So I get this nice, beautiful run of color everywhere, okay? Stirring it up on the paper, but I'm not um, pushing it with my brush. So these colors remain um, kind of able to do their own thing. They're, we're not disturbing the fibers, fibers of the paper at all. So I'm letting that run around. And now what I need to do, you can, you can absorb this with a little paper towel if you want to. Go, don't go in and dab. Just tilt it at the corner and let it absorb. And now what I want to do is do a glaze on top of this. So what we have to do is we have to take a short break and blow dry your paper, okay? And get it really nice and dry. So we're gonna do that right now. Okay, so I've blow dried my paper and you can see that it's uh, those colors have gone a little bit, they're faded a little bit now because when watercolor dries, it does um, become lighter and less intense, okay? So in this case, uh, you know, I could leave it like this if I want to, but I want it to be a little bit, have a little bit more punch, have a little bit more play, be a little bit more abstract like this guy here. So I want to glaze on it. And it, so what's important about glazing is you want to dry in between the glaze, okay? You can do a bunch of glazes. You can do, you know, mini glazes, but we're just going to do two today. Um, but you want to dry it in between so you're not disturbing those colors that are already in here. Um, you're not lifting them up, and they would lift up if they were wet. If they're dry, they're mostly going to stay there as you laid them down, unless you start to stir, disturbing the fibers or getting in there to try to release with them some scrubbing of your brush. Okay? So we're not going to do that. We're going to use a very light hand and put some more colors in here. All right. So here's our variegated wash. Now what you can do on the next step is you can either wet this whole rectangle again if you want to, because as you can see, I've got some very, very soft edges in here. So what I mean by that is these edges from this color to this color, the transition here is very, very smooth and soft and hardly, you can see here, there's not a hard edge, there's not a hard transition. There is right here where the paint met up with the, the dry paper. But when it was all wet, it's a very smooth transition. So that's a certain look you get. Also notice here with this cobalt teal blue, it is a sedimentary color. And you can see the granulating um, little sediments settling into the valleys of the paper here. And that's just a different pigment. That's what that pigment does every single time you lay it down. It's going to granulate like that. Other pigments don't. These two don't. They're very smooth looking. What I have over here is a little bloom. And that's caused by a little bit more water um, drying, uh, this is drying faster than this area here, and so it ha caused some sedimentary um, granules to kind of build up right there in that, that, that area. Um, but that's just a bloom. This is actually the grains of the pigment setting into um, this, um, in this particular color. So when you're doing your glaze, you can either wet the whole thing so that you've got all of this smooth area again inside your rectangle, or you can do wet on dry. Keep the paper dry, keep your brush and paint wet, and just lay it on the surface of that, which gives you a little bit more intense color, and it also provides you with a few hard edges inside your shape. And that's the way I'm going to do it today, and I'd like you to try the same if you want to. Um, try both. After we're done with this, try wetting it um, and doing it that way. So I'm wetting my brush, dragging it across the top of my water container, and go ahead and grab some of that, um, that um, Aussie gold, if you will, stir it again so we don't get those little um, pigment chunks in there. 
go ahead and lay it on top of this Aussie Gold. And usually when I do these washes, I like to leave some hard edges in there and not cover the whole thing just because it adds a little bit more interest, okay? Um, going pretty quickly here, I'm kissing that color again, as you saw. And I'm gonna go ahead and grab some of this um, cobalt right there, lay it in there. And why not, just for fun, a little bit of the um, cobalt, I'm sorry, quinacridone burnt orange, okay. This would be this would be great for like say a um, oh a pot you know or or something like that some textury thing that's happening we don't really know it doesn't matter so what happens um, when you have some of these colors that are more wet than other areas is it begins to cause a bloom that color wants to spread out into that area and when it encounters an area that's a little bit more dry it slows down it dries at a different rate and it begins to cause what's called a bloom or some variation in the pigment across the surface of the paper there's the dog barking nice um so anyway, when it begins to dry a little bit, if you want to, this is what I did with my last one, just wet your brush, splatter, just clear water into there. That'll cause some blooms, okay? And then what's also fun is you can splatter. Don't go, don't go crazy on it because if you get too much, um, it'll get too wet and there won't be that contrast between the drier paper. You can see some blooms beginning to develop here. Isn't that fun? Okay, so let's get... Um, hmm, Let's get some of this Aussie Gold because that's what I have going on here. Um, and let's do it too with the paint itself and splatter. I'm going to splatter into that cobalt and maybe a couple of areas here. Just knocking my brush on the edge of my um, finger to knock some of that color into there. And let's do it with just a touch of the um, cobalt. Just give it a pop here and there. Isn't that fun? Oh my gosh, I love it. So this is a great way to kind of have a, an, an interesting, almost abstract thing going on here where it's all about color, it's all about texture, and abstract fun. Um, I would say that if you have time, and don't we all right now, um, to go ahead and experiment with some other colors on your palette. Try not to pick too many colors at once, um, maybe three. Uh, maybe you go with a blue theme next time. Maybe I did one here the other day um, with cobalt and um, you know, you know, transparent yellow, I think, and cobalt and the teal. Um, you know, try some other colors and see if you can come up with something that's a little different and just try a bunch of your colors. See what colors work better together, what work um, differently. Um, and really just enjoy this. You can glaze on it several times if you want to. Um, you can even come in and do a little scribbling with the back of your brush, which is always fun. Um, before it dries and that causes some interesting pattern and texture in here too. So anyway, um, do that, leave a comment, tell me how you did, I want to see it um, and um, maybe take a picture of it, try to get it to me somehow, we'll figure that out. Guys, this video thing, I'm very marginally um, good at videos, so in other words, terrible. But I'll do my best and try to get you guys um, some new things to do every week and so um, I'll let you know uh, when the next video is coming out, hopefully next week. Anyway, everybody stay well, stay safe, and have fun painting. Bye-bye.